and that ties Eric Bogan from the 1980s as the highest world-ranked American ever in the modern age of table tennis. And the modern age of table tennis means since they went to the sponge rackets back in the 1960s. And we see the first point underway in this match. And so that is the history of Kanak Ja over these last 15 months. So because he hasn't played in so long, he's dropped out of the world rankings. They take you out if you don't play for that length of time. And as soon as he starts playing international tournaments again, his world ranking will show up again. And depending on how he does will depend where he starts out. But you're looking at a world top 20 player right now when you're watching Kanak Jaw. You're also looking at one of the greatest Americans to ever play the game. So let's talk USA table tennis ratings. Kanak Jaw right around 2767. And that actually is a rating too low for him because he has not played domestically in the United States hardly at all. Look at that great rally. Let's watch that again. He's hardly played here. He hadn't played anywhere in the last 15 months. We just discussed that. But even before that, he's over in Europe so much that he rarely plays here. So his USA table tennis rating is way too low. He's he, at 100 points. He's a 2850 plus player. So that's what his rating would be in reality if he had been playing recently here. And we have Kai Jung, who is currently rated 2632. So you have about a 200 plus rating difference in level according to USA Table Tennis ratings to give you an idea of the level difference in this match. Oh, well, that's too good. And if you're Kanak Ja, you just tip your hat and say, hey, that's too good for me. But Ja's going to make you do that throughout the game in this match. One of his strengths is he smothers you with consistency, and he doesn't give you many unforced errors. And it's so easy to tell people, don't make unforced errors, but that is an art and a skill to do it at the highest levels. And Ja is one of the best in the world at not giving you unforced errors, or we like to call them freebies. An unforced error is a shot where you shouldn't have missed it because it was a relatively easy ball. But it also can mean not missing receives. It can mean other things as well, but basically, Ja is so good at starting every rally and getting deep into the rally. That's a philosophy he believes in and plays by. Like right there. Saw how he just put that ball on the table. He didn't like where it was, so he didn't go for much. Watch this right here. He said, okay, I'm just going to put it on the table and extend the rally. That was not the ball I was looking for. And see, that's a mindset he has. And it's worked really well for him thus far in his career. So we're all excited to see 
job back into tournament action after that 15 month layoff. But we're also excited to have him here in the United States playing against his teammates. We have not seen him play domestically for many years. And so this is a wonderful opportunity to watch how he matches up with so many other players here in this country. And basically what's happened while he's been off playing so much in Europe and Asia, the level of play in this country has gotten better. And we've seen that this tournament. We saw Fed, Chef, play a great match against Ja. Oh, great rally and great finish by Jaw. Watch the power right there. There's a nice down the line, backhand opening from Jai. So good at this, just a quick flick of the wrist, points over. That's such a small stroke, but yet creates so much speed and spin. And Jaw comes out and wins the first game, 11 to six. And we are ready to go in the second game. Kanak Jaw with the serve. And this is about the fourth match I've watched Jaw play this tournament. And we just talked about how he hadn't played for 15 months and I can clearly see that he has found a much better rhythm today than he had yesterday. And he looked pretty good yesterday, but he looks even better today. So when you don't play for 15 months, there's no possible way your tournament's sharp. Obviously, he's been practicing during that time. But when you haven't played a tournament in that long, that's not easy. So already on the second day, he's clearly playing at a sharper level. One, two. Look at that great backhand there. Look how short that stroke is. The future and present state of table tennis, the guys that have the shortest stroke that create the most speed and spin have the advantage. There's some more nice short strokes there by Jaw. Let's watch his technique. Little stroke on the backhand, little stroke on the forehand. Now, why is that good? Well, it makes gives you so much more time to react to the next ball if it comes back. Long, big strokes make you slower. You can make the first one, but it takes you longer to get ready for the second shot if the ball comes back. Whereas if you do a short stroke, you're done quickly and you have more time to react to the next shot. Ja looks quicker on his legs today than yesterday as well. Look at these little steps he's taken. Oh, 
I know any time I stopped playing for a while, and I actually stopped playing for eight years at one point because I was injured and I retired from the sport at age 27. Thought I was done because my body gave out on me. I got into the rehab world and actually that became my profession. I'm a muscular specialist, learned how to rehab my own body, came back after eight years off and played in my 40s, winning the US singles championship and the North American singles championships. And I gotta tell you that first year I was back to say I wasn't tournament sharp would be an understatement. And so it took me a while, actually it took me a couple years to get my rhythm and my tournament toughness back. And so it's not easy to not play a tournament for that long and just come and jump right into one and have a good result. That was a nice misdirection on that received by Ja. Fool Jung. Let's watch that point again. Great reaction by Ja, but great decision by Jung to change the speed and the pace of the ball. That's what won him that point. Ja was not able to deal with the slow nature of that last ball going from speed to slow. Oh, that's too good. Watch this. Great backhand down the line. Watch the technique here. Little stroke, little stroke. There's a nice shot by Jung. Great ball placement down the line. Nobody home. Good job by Jung hanging around this game. Giving himself a small chance. Quality point.
And Ja wins the second game. 11 to Right now, you can see that Jung is trying to pressure Ja by adding a little more pace to his shots. Well, that time, Jung went into safe mode. And watch what happens here. <laughs> that was an interesting shot. Sure, I've ever seen that shot before. So, Jung inventing new shots out there. Nice serve. That trick jaw tricked him with the spin. Jaw has excellent receives, has some of the better receives in the world. It's very difficult to get him to miss your serves. And played. 2015 Pan American team with Jaw. I also played in the 2014 World Team Championships with Jaw. And he was a young man then, only 13, 14 years old, and he had excellent receives back then. And they have only gotten better. It's almost like he was born with good receives. He's always been good at them, and as time goes on, he just keeps getting better and better. Chung changing things up. Now he's going for finesse, trying that out. That didn't work. Tried going for speed, and that wasn't working too well either. See how Jaw smothers you with consistency. Just not making any unforced errors early in the rallies. You have to make quality shots like this right here to win points against Jaw. That's a nice opening loop there from Jaw. Wow. Ball had a lot of force, low to the net, loaded with top spin. And Jung agrees, as he couldn't deal with it. Oh, great serve and finish. Watch the location of this serve. Wide to the backhand.
there's a rare miss on a receive. And Jaw went for a little extra there. He's got a nice lead, so you'll see athletes do that occasionally. When they're feeling comfortable, they like to try some different stuff. Great reaction there by Jung. Let's watch that again. Watch the speed of Jaw. What a nice, quick stroke and a reloop there by Jung. There's another serve to the wide backhand of Jung. Nak Cha wins the third game, 11 to six, and leads this match three games to zero. Well, it took a while, but Jung able to get a clean serve out there without hitting the net, and a nice follow and a great start to this game, up six to two. <laughs> and there's a nice receive. Totally confusing jaw. 
you saw the reaction of John. It's not normal that he gets tricked like that. Great job by Jung. That ball, I think, hit the top of the net. And Kai Jung with a great opportunity to get on the board and win his first game. Good serve here. Deep into the body of Jaw. Jaw had to make a decision. And he decided to step to his left, take his forehand. And that ball went off the end of the table. Right there, that's an overplay. Something Jung was doing earlier in the tournament, but the last couple matches has really found his rhythm and been playing at the right pace, staying within himself. And there's no lead safe if you're playing against Cha. And you know Jung is thinking that right now. It was up 8-2. Still comfortable, but not as comfortable as he was this game with this lead. And now he's getting a little uncomfortable. This jaw is sneaking his way back into this game. Oh, and Jung needed that. Sometimes when you're on a bad run of points, you'd like an unforced error from your opponent, and that's what that was. That's the advantage of getting yourself out to such a big lead. Your opponent really can't afford to make any unforced errors. But Kanak Cha is still in this game. And he's going to make you earn it. So now we got a t And Jaw deuces the game up. And great job being ready for that deep serve because Jung had a minute to decide what his strategy was going to be coming out of that timeout. And he decided he was going to serve deep, and Jaw was ready for it. Oh, beautiful serve and finish by Jaw. 
What a comeback. This will be this game if Ja can finish things off right here. Great serve. Great serve. Went right back to the deep serve again. That doesn't happen too often when you're playing jaw, when you get away with just pushing that ball out like that. It's a great opportunity for Jung now to win this fourth game. And I'm not sure what happened there, but Jaw was apologizing. Did he mishit it? Yeah, he mishit it. That's what happened. It came off the edge of his racket. Oh, great reaction by Jung. That serve fooled nobody. Look at that. And another good serve, and Kai Jung. Great point. Let's watch that again. And this ball hits the top of the net right there. That was two nets in a row. Jaw hit the net. 
And Jung able to then save the net and get a net of his own. Great backhand directed to the wide forehand of Jaw. Let's watch it again. Look at that shot right there. It's nicely done, and that is Jung's strength. He is very creative and powerful from that backhand side, but he also can play with finesse, which he's done very well the last couple matches. He was overplaying early in the tournament, and he started changing things up. And now we see him here in the semifinals. And there's another change up we just talked about where he went speed and then he backed off. Played a slower pace ball. That ball had a high arc on it, throwing jaw off. What a great start to this game by Jung. Ja is so tough when he's down because he switches gears and he goes into safe mode. And what I mean by that is he starts backing off and putting the ball on the table, playing a little more defensive, forcing you to have to make quality shots through him. And that's a quality shot by Jung. That's too good. Let's watch that again. This lead for Jung evaporating quickly this game. And that's a great rally by both athletes. Let's watch it again. Jaw takes the lead, eight to seven.
Oh, great reaction by Jaw. That ball hit the top of the net, but watch the reaction right here. There's another example of why you want to play into the body of your opponent when you're trying to finish them off. You play into the racket, and that's what's coming back at you more than you want. And Kanak Jaw.